Hi, everybody. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Craig Malkin, a clinical psychologist and lecturer for Harvard Medical School. I'm also the author of Rethinking Narcissism, as you might know, which is devoted to help you understand and cope with narcissism in all its forms and all your relationships. I want to talk about love bombing today because I've had a number of interviews about it. And actually, there's been a lot of information out there, particularly, I gather, on TikTok with the hashtag NarcTalk. Love bombing is not a phrase I like. I've said this in interviews because it's not love. That's the main reason. It actually has its roots in something healthy, which is called idealization in the research and the theory and in psychological literature. You would think of idealization as positive illusions, which is another name that it goes by. That is putting somebody on a pedestal. I write about this in Rethinking Narcissism, uh, treating them as, as special, viewing them as special compared to other people because it helps us feel special in part. That's really what positive illusions are about. And the reason I want to talk a little bit about love bombing is because there's been a lot of information out there. Some of it's helpful. Some of it I get concerned about. The problem is people are being made to feel that if they have that experience of feeling special or if they have that experience of somebody treating them that way, that it is only a sign of narcissism and it is bad. It is love bombing. And that's just not true. In one study, Benjamin Lee of Haverford University, a psychologist with another colleague whose name slips my mind right now, did a study where they looked at over 40,000 romantic couples and they looked at predictors of longevity and the number one predictor of longevity wasn't winning self-esteem or personality even a sense of of love and and closeness at the start of the relationship it was positive illusions that is did the people view their partner as objectively smarter warmer more attractive than other people might have viewed them? Was there a kind of rose-colored glasses tint to the relationship? That was the strongest predictor far and above anything else over longevity in a couple, because that is part of pair bonding. It's part of the experience of closeness. So how do we understand love bombing and the problem there? It's not about the experience. And the reason I want to talk to you about this today It's because I don't want anybody feeling if they go through that or they are made to feel special by a partner or they're treated in that way that it's something, it predicts something terrible because that is not what it's about. It's as with most of these things about an interaction because as you know from what I just mentioned, there are plenty of healthy couples who experience this. I myself did. I'm happy to say that my wife did. So how do we distinguish between healthy idealization and something that's going by the name of love bombing. Well, it's really about the response. And what I mean by that is it's fine to have that. It's fine to have some of that and you should enjoy it. I want you to be able to enjoy that in relationships. It's so important to romantic experience. It's when a person pretty much glues you to a pedestal or insists on always relating to you in this way as if there's no other way to connect or feel close. Then you can start to think about possibilities of narcissism. I want to correct some of the information because I think a lot of people have been made to feel like they fell for something or they were tricked and that the problem is those feelings. The problem is not those feelings. The problem is what people do with them. So the metaphor I often use is we often invite friends, people that we have a connection with into our house. What if they steal from you? Well, It's easy to be a thief. All you have to do is be willing to take what doesn't belong to you secretly when you're in somebody's house. And the problem isn't inviting people into the house or being trusting. The problem is the other person and the way they behave who steals from you when they're in your house. Likewise, if somebody takes advantage of the process of idealization, either consciously or unconsciously, that problem lies with them. You should be able to enjoy it. And again, I want you to you know, not take that on equists. I've talked about equists uh, who tend to engage in a lot of self-blame, and it's part of their connection to somebody who's extremely narcissist to blame themselves instead of recognizing the problem. But the reality is that if you respond to somebody who is, say, trying to sweep you off your feet, I had one client whose 
boyfriend would often show up with tickets to a concert or come with a bunch of roses and all kinds of things, all awesome, uh, you know, wonderful experience. The problem is if they wanted to do something low key or not talk on the phone for eight hours, he kind of sent signals that he wasn't so happy. That lends itself to a kind of assessment of whether or not this is healthy idealization. A relationship isn't real. If when you say, okay, I have to get off the phone, I really like you, uh, but I can't stay on the phone for a long time, it was nice to do it once, or uh, this all feels really good, can we slow things down a little bit, I want to kind of keep my head about me. If you say things like that and the response of the other person is one of anger or rejection, that is a sign. Because what that tells you is they cannot establish, maintain, and create a sense of closeness without that sense of idealization. They've got to glue you to the pedestal. And that is about creating a sense of specialness in the relationship for them, not for you. So I hope that's a helpful clarification. If you like this video, please give a big thumbs up. You can also ring the bell on the video so that you can receive these as soon as they come out. I hope to do more. It's been difficult to do that during this strange time that we've been living in. It's hard for me to add these things in into my life, but I hope you enjoyed it. And I look forward to talking to you with the next video. Thanks. Mm -hmm.